I'm not even breathing right now. It's so hard to take a good photo for the cover. Hi, hello, and welcome. This afternoon, when I was trying to clean up my personal skincare studio, I saw these three bottles. So just before I throw them away into the bin, I just wanted to make a quick video to talk about the ingredients and why they don't work for me anymore. Now, all of these three products share one major active ingredient in common, and that is niacinamide. Niacinamide itself is a really good ingredient. A lot of people are talking about it. It's been super hyped by the media. A lot of cosmeceutical companies are using it as their magical ingredients to improve the skin's conditions in many, many ways. Now, the science has actually proven that niacinamide is kind of a magical ingredient as it has been proven to increase the skin's barrier functionalities by um, having an effect on protein synthesis. Now, the skin's barrier, the skin's uh, stratum corneum, the top layer of the skin, is mainly consisted of carotenocytes, and that is a form of protein. So niacinamide has the ability to stimulate protein synthesis, and that means it can help the skin rebuild the barrier um, in, a, in a much faster way. And by doing that, it also helps to improve um, transepidermal water loss conditions, meaning it can help the skin retain hydration uh, rate. So niacinamide can help the skin build the barrier to make the skin feel less sensitive and more hydrated along the way. Now, one of the major, major reasons for me to use niacinamide is due to its ability to inhibit melanin formation. Now, my skin, uh, I have phototype four. I am very prone to get hyperpigmentation and I had to get a lot of treatments done to remove freckles and hyperpigmentation. 10 seconds out in the sun without sunscreen would be enough to get me freckles. So I've been extra, extra careful uh, to definitely put on sunscreen every day and underneath the sunscreen I make sure that I have antioxidants and niacinamide. I've been doing that for a long time so um, lucky enough that's been working for me. However, these three products I have to throw them away. Um, I'm gonna tell you the reasons why. Now the first product the Ordinary Niacinamide 10% with 1% Zinc. It sounds like a very good formulation. However, it did absolutely nothing to my skin. I understand that some dermatologists and doctors are claiming, hey, don't use Niacinamide over the 4 to 5% of concentration as it may cause skin problems, right? It may cause skin problems, however, not to everybody. And there's been no study to say that um, using highly concentrated niacinamide products would cause skin damage at all. If there is any, please send that study to me because I personally have never seen one and I've never found one. Um, and my personal experience with niacinamide is that um, even at a higher concentration, I've used niacinamide products with over 40% of concentration and it never even caused any irritation to my skin. So, um, and my skin is not even that resistant. So niacinamide itself, I definitely believe that it, it, it's not harmful to the skin, even at a higher concentration. 
However, the ordinary 10% niacinamide has a really tacky texture and it's a little too occlusive for me. When a product has a tacky texture, um, a lot of times it's because of the formulation. It usually contains chemicals that are more occlusive, uh, similar to cross a polymer type of uh, ingredients that kind of form uh, a film-like texture on top of the skin to congest the pores. Um, so after a few days of using this product, I had a breakout. So I had to stop putting it on my face and start it. Um, I started putting it on my neck because the neck um, doesn't have as much sebaceous glands as the face and it kind of needed that extra love from the tackiness and occlusiveness. However, I still didn't notice any significant difference on my neck, so it just didn't really do anything to me. And then I started using the 15% Niacinamide by Revolution Skincare London. I really like the texture. Um, it has a very silky kind of texture, very light. It glides very well on the skin. And after three months of product opening, it's still completely odorless. Mm, they've done really, really, really good job to formulate this product. However, <laughs> Um, I also didn't really notice any significant uh, difference on my skin. And uh, after about a month and a half of product opening, I started to notice some weird textural change within the fluid. So the serum has turned from being crystal clear to becoming kind of dirty. Um, I'm not sure if you guys can see it on the screen, but the little bubbles within the serum itself uh, became very like dusty-like. Um, it's not because of the crystallization of niacinamide because niacinamide usually at a higher concentration um, tend to uh, form crystallization and that's because niacinamide naturally has a larger molecular size and when um, got in contact with the air it tends to crystallize but it's not the case with this one because crystallization tends to form outside the bottle or around the bottleneck, the white, the whitish, frosty type of uh, substance. But what I'm talking about is the little bubbles and dirty little bubbles within the fluid. I've never used it on anywhere else, so it's definitely not cross-contaminated. And I believe this is because of the product instability. Um, the product bottle does indicate that it will be good for 12 months after product opening. Now, even it's a little bit humid uh, here in my studio, it still should last a little longer than that. The next one would be from Paula's Choice. I love Paula's Choice. So when this product came out, I bought it 20% very highly concentrated, so does it claim. However, I also didn't really see a significant difference on my skin. Now, I have a few theories as to why that happened. Before I tell you my reasons, I also wanna show you something that's kinda odd. Look at this. When I first bought it, it was crystal clear. Now after about a couple of months of product opening, the serum became yellow. Now that could be, it could be a concern because now niacinamide itself is relatively photostable and uh, it doesn't change its color easily. 
Now, if niacinamide, niacinamide became yellow, it usually is an indication that it has turned into something else. It could have turned into niacin because niacin is another chemical compound that's another form of vitamin B3 and that is yellowish. Niacin, when topically applied on the skin, can cause irritation, redness, and that's what we call niacin flush. It usually is still harmless, but to some people, it can cause problems. And when applied in a higher dosage, it can cause toxicity. So I definitely wouldn't want to risk my own face by using this product. There can also be another possibility. Now I had to look at the ingredient list again. It turns out that they formulated this product with ascorbyl uh, glucoside. Now that's a form of active vitamin C. By combining these two products together, when niacinamide and vitamin C combine together, um, when the environment isn't good enough, they can actually interact and turn each other into something else. Now, the vitamin C derivative could be oxidized, um, and in this process, it can interact with niacinamide. Now, because this product has been opened for about three months, we're not sure how much of the niacinamide has become niacin to become that yellowish fluid. Now also here's another trick that I wanted to let you guys know. The trick of cosmeceutical companies or skincare brands, when they make their products and the claimed formula on the bottles could be a little different and even misleading. Now, 20% of niacinamide, because I, I haven't seen any crystallization from this product, um, it could be an indication of insufficient amount of niacinamide, or it could be because they are doing such a fantastic job that they um, have actually made the niacinamide into a way smaller molecular size to prevent crystallization from happening. Um, however, from like me using this product and the skin reaction that I had um, and the efficacy that I felt on my skin, I kind of feel that they perhaps used um, a solution-based niacinamide. Now, when a skincare company, I'm not saying that they, Paula's Choice absolutely did this. I'm just saying that in general, skincare companies can purchase their ingredients from suppliers that supply them solutions rather than pure forms of the active ingredients. So if they bought a uh, supplied ingredient that is a solution, niacinamide solution. So it actually contains say about 50% of niacinamide. And if they added 20% of that ingredient, it would actually only turn out to be 10% because the solution itself only contains 50%. Does that make sense? So um, that way they can still claim to contain 20% of niacinamide just because maybe they have an inky list um, to show that the supplier has made that solution onto the inky list. Um, so they can like legitimately put the concentration as 20%. However, the actual pure form of niacinamide could be lower than that. And uh, so these are just my uh, my opinions, uh, Paula's choice, I don't know, and um, 
uh, I wouldn't know if they actually regardless of the regardless of the concentration because there has now regardless of the concentration of niacinamide because the texture of the serum has already changed i would not use it anymore because um regardless of the concentration of niacinamide i would not use this product anymore just because of the textural change i would advise the same to all of you if you have a niacinamide product and if you've noticed a significant difference or any difference at all in terms of its texture odor and uh, um So regardless of now regardless of the concentration of niacinamide, I would still not use this product anymore just because of the change in terms of the texture. Now if you have a niacinamide product and if you've noticed a change in its color or odor, then I would suggest that you stop using it. My advice would be um, use it up as soon as you can after product opening, preferably around three to four weeks after opening, um, and you have to keep it in a very good condition, good environment, cool and dry, below 25 degrees. I know that a lot of products would have a 12 month product opening uh, period. Um, a lot of times it's not the case depending on where you live. So I hope this video can help you uh, understand uh, the maintenance of having a niacinamide product. And if you have any questions at all, please uh, let me know. And uh, I would also like to know your personal stories about using niacinamide products. Do they work for you? Um, and has your Paula's Choice 20% turned into something that's yellowish? I really want to hear uh, your side of the story as well. And uh, at the same time, take care. Um, see me next time.